Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United have drawn Real Sociedad in the last 32 of the Europa League. The draw was done earlier on today. The first leg against Real Sociedad is on the 18th and the second leg is on the 25th of February. And Real Sociedad will be a tough game. You know, they're doing very well in the La Liga this season. They are top. Uh, David Silva will be coming up against Manchester United. And so too will Adnan Yanazai. Adnan Yanazai is a former Manchester United player. Um, obviously, we got to the semi-finals of the Europa League last season. Obviously, Sevilla beat us 2-1. We won the competition back in 2017 under Jose Mourinho. You know, we did beat Ajax in the final by two goals to nil. What? You saying that? What? What? Who was that? Someone's just been robbed of the phone on Waterloo. Waterloo. Um, well, it says Waterloo. Have the. Is it inside the Pudsey or Waterloo Lane, isn't it? My grandson has been attacked near the shops on Waterloo. He's been yeah. robbed of his phone and bus pass. Yeah. But also battered about the head with a bat. Yeah. If anyone has any information, please let us or the police know. Yeah. Get that fucking wankers. Yeah. It's either Waterloo lane near Nisa Stars. Yeah. Or Waterloo at Putter. Mm. It might be Waterloo at Putter, that Yeah. Uh, sorry about that, I was just uh, talking. But yeah. So now I'm going to give you the latest news on Paul Pogba. So Paul Pogba's exit has been delayed until the summer of 2021 because Mini Riola has made a fresh statement on Paul Pogba's future. And he said that a move away from Man United in January is not possible because it's hard to do top deals in January. So he has said that he will be leaving the football club in the summer. Mini Riola did recently say that uh, Paul Popper's time at Manchester United is over. He's got no intentions of signing a new contract. And he did say he's unhappy and he has to leave. Now, Paul Pogba spoke about his Man United future recently for the first time since Mini Riola's comments, and he said that, I've always fought and I will always fight for Manchester United, my teammates and the fans, and he said he's 1,000% involved in Man United's project. Now, Paul Pogba has been heavily linked with a return to Juventus. And I think there could be a swap deal involved. You know, we could get Cristiano Ronaldo as part of a deal of Pogba going back to Juventus. You know, maybe we could get Paul De Bala as part of the deal. Maybe we could even get Matis De Ligt as part of a deal. Paul Pogba did endure four good years with Juventus, but the vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison to his ones at Juventus. He hasn't only been linked with a return to Juventus, Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with him. Earlier on this season, Pogba made an admission saying that one day his dream is to join Real Madrid. PSG have been in for him before, so too have Barcelona and into Milan. This is his fifth season at Manchester United since he rejoined. You know, he scored, what, 35 goals in 170-odd games. You know, he's our most expensive sign at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. Earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract. So he's under contract with Man United until June 2022. 
That was also confirmed by Fabrizio Romano. He's had a good couple of periods at Man United. You know, he did well towards the end of last season and he did well in that three-month period when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the temporary boss. And to Paul Pobber's credit, he's done well recently. Um, I don't think he was so bad against Man City. I thought he also did well um, against RB Leipzig when he came on, made an impact and got his name on the score sheet. Scored the other week against West Ham. An exceptional goal. That was his first start in the Premier League for over a month. Not so long ago, he had an ankle injury. Uh, Paul Pogba was missed like missed quite a few games, didn't he? But Oli confirmed that that ankle injury was totally contrast to the one that he had last season. It recently said that we'd lowered our asking price for Paul Pogba and we will accept as low as £50 million. And obviously Solskjaer reeled prior to the City game that he's had conversations with Paul Pogba and Oli said that Pogba's focusing on the club. You know, we had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but we had to let him go due to limited appearances. During the last international break, uh, Pogba made quite a few comments saying like this season's been the most difficult period in his career and he said that playing for France is a breath of fresh air. And in general, he was talking about his Man United struggles this season, but reflect on them comments, he did receive a lot of criticism. And during the last international break, Didier De Jomps was talking a lot about Paul Pogba. You know, maybe there's still a chance that, you know, we could give Paul Pogba a new contract at the club. Obviously, during the summer, uh, Pogba's agent, Mini Riola, came out and said that Pogba wanted to stay at Man United and he would all talks over a new long-term contract. So, that is the breaking news on him. Now, our next game is Sheffield United. That is on Thursday at Bramall Lane, 8 o'clock kickoff. The preview will be coming up tomorrow sometime. Now, we should be beating Sheffield United because Sheffield United have been abysmal this season. You know, they are sitting bottom of the Premier League. I haven't even won a game yet in the league this season. They've only registered one point from 12 league games. That's very, very bad from a Sheffield United perspective. Uh, they recently lost 3-0 to Southampton. Uh, the game at Bramall Lane last season, though, was 3-3. Don't forget we overcame a two-goal deficit. And obviously the game at Old Trafford was 3-0. Anthony Martial had got a hat-trick in that game. Sheffield United's current manager is Chris Wilder. Um, he's been at Sheffield United now for a good four years or so. I, I give him a lot of credit last season because he did well with Sheffield last season. Uh, Sheffield, I think, finished was at 8th or 9th last season. Uh, Chris Wilder, before he was at Sheffield, he managed Northampton, managed Oxford, didn't he? He's managed Halifax and Alfred Town before. Now, Sheffield United could have a few players out for the game on Thursday. Um, I think, is it Keane Bryan's got an injury? Um, Oliver McBurney, one of their key players, could be out as well. Uh, Jack O'Connell, he's out for the season. So, they have got a um, few players out. I think Simon Moore's a doubt as well. Uh, Stevens recently come back from injury for them, so too did Ampadu. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Um, obviously, Norwood, he's another one of Sheffield United's key players. They've obviously got Musset, they've got Billy Sharp, they've got John Fleck. I think he scored in the fixture at Bramall Lane last season, so too did McBurney. Uh, they've obviously got Brewster. 
I think they got him from Liverpool during the summer. They've got Burke. They got him from West Brom. Uh, obviously, they've got Aaron Ramsdale, who's their goalkeeper. So, there you go. We're coming into the game against Sheffield on the back of a 0-0 draw with Manchester City. We've done well, though, in the league recently. We are unbeaten in our last five league games. After Sheffield United, we've got Leeds United. That's on Sunday. That is a massive game. You know, Man United and Leeds United is old rivalry. And the old rivalry is back. It's going to be the first meeting between us and Leeds in the Premier League since 2004. You know, Leeds got relegated in 2004 and they were out of the top flight for a good 16 years or so. But they won the championship last season, Leeds. And that was their first trophy in 28 years. Uh, actually, last time we played Leeds uh, was in pre-season in the summer of 2019. Beat them 4-0 in Australia. Obviously, played them back in 2011 in the League Cup. Beat them 3-0. Mike Lowen scored twice in that and Giggs scored. And they beat us back in 2010 in the FA Cup third round 1-0. Uh, Jermaine Betford had scored. Uh, I think Leeds are currently sitting, what, 14th in the league. Um, you know, they do play some expansive football and, you know, they've had some good results this season, to be fair. Um, obviously beating Everton 1-0, you know, drew with Arsenal, drew with City. You know, there was actually lucky to lose to Liverpool on the opening day. Liverpool beat them 4-3. You know, they've actually, you know, been battered a few times this season as well, you know. So they've had some bad results, you know. They did lose to Palace 4-1, lost to Leicester 4-1, you know, lost to Chelsea 3-1. Uh, recently lost to West Ham by two goals to one. But Biel Marcelo Bielsa is a pretty good manager. Um, Obviously, he was the one that taught Pep Guardiola because uh, worked, they worked together when they were younger, did, you know, Guardiola, Marcelo Bielsa and that. So there you go. But really, really looking forward to that game. After Leeds, you know, we've got Everton in the Cowbell Cup. That's an imperative game because the Cowbell Cup is a chance for us winning a trophy. Everton will be tough, though. Then after, obviously, Everton, we've got Leicester and, you know, that's going to be another tough game for us. So games are coming up thick and fast for Manchester United. Out there. Now, obviously, it is good that we are making plans for next year because, obviously, next year we are looking to make more signings. You know, there has been a lot of players on our agenda. On my video that I did this morning, I give you the breaking news on, you know, Jaden Sancho, didn't I? Recent events at Brushy Dortmund have now handed us a transfer boost or could hand us a transfer boost in our pursuit of Sancho because Dortmund have just recently sat to Lucy and Favre. Because uh, Dortmund have only won one of their last five games and they got thrashed at home to Stuttgart on Saturday by five goals to one. Don't forget Sancho was our number one priority target during the summer transfer window. The main explanation we didn't get him though is because Dortmund wanted £108 million. We wasn't willing to meet their valuation. Um, obviously... The Athletic have said recently that we've called our interest in Daya Upiamicano and we, we no longer consider him as a priority. Uh, we know that at the end of this current season, Upiamicano is going to be available for around £38 million because that's when his release clause does become active. It actually mentions now that Bayern Munich are leading the race. Liverpool have also been in for him as well, but I'd take him at Man United. Because we need a centre half, we need someone to go alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. I give you the news on Christian Eriksen as well this morning. I don't see Man United getting him, to be honest with you, but Inter Milan are looking to offload him. 
I think Erling Haaland, we could go in for him next year. Uh, we missed out on him back in January. And I said it was a shame we missed out on him because he would have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type signing. Uh, obviously, we've been in for Usman Dembele as well. You know, I think Man United have got to make around four signings, five signings next year. You know, if we are to, you know, compete for the title and all of that. Obviously, we're going to get rid of more players next year because there is still Deadwood in the squad. You know, I think next year, like I've already gone through with you so many times, we'll get rid of Lingard, we'll get rid of Jones, we'll get rid of Rojo, we'll get rid of Sergio Romero because Sergio Romero is now our third choice goalkeeper. I think we'll get rid of Matic. Because he's too inconsistent now. And he's actually lost his place in the team. Uh, Daniel James could go. Because his appearances are now limited. And you know he has been out of form when he has been playing. You know There was rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan earlier on this season. Because he's now our third choice left back. And there was rumours of Dean Henderson going out on loan. Now I think at some point Dean Henderson needs to be our number one. And a lot of Man United fans have said, you know, it is now the right time to put Dean Henderson as number one. Um, I do believe that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager in January. And he does need more backing at the football club because during the summer transfer window, he wasn't backed enough. And... He showed his frustration towards our board a few times during the summer transfer window. But Woodward's come out several times to support Oli and he does say that he is fully behind him, even though we enjoyed a poor start to the season. Our board have, back, have, back, have not backed any of the managers that we've had since Ferguson left. The board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years. Uh, there's obviously other problems at the club, like I was talking about with you yesterday. I think, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is one of the biggest problems at the club. Because, like I've gone through with you, he's out of his depth at Manchester United. His decision making is very, very poor because in a lot of games he's made too many mistakes and it's cost us. And I just don't think he's got that proven pedigree as a manager. You know, Manchester United is the third club in his managerial career. I've also got to say that uh, our defence is one of the biggest problems because, you know, we've gone behind so many times in games this season and plus our defence do make mistakes and, you know, Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof have two very slow centre-halves. Uh, some people think, you know, a goal, the goalkeeper's one of the problems, you know. De Gea's obviously nowhere near as good as he used to be. Obviously, at least in the last few years, he's been making mistakes. But don't get me wrong, you know, De Gea has enjoyed some good games this season where he has made good saves, but there's obviously some games where he really hasn't had much to do. He was definitely the culprit for the third goal in our 3-2 loss against RB Leipzig. But David De Gea has been long serving at the club. This is now his 10th season at Man United. And he's made over 500 appearances for us in all competitions. But I did say, didn't I, he will remain our number one for this present time. Probably will remain our number one for the rest of this season, David De Gea. He's got no intentions of leaving Man United, has he? <laughs> so, yeah, they are the problems. Obviously, like I've said to you, Ollie's got to identify his best 11 at the club because I don't think he knows his best 11 and he's also got to select the right formation. Solskjaer is not the long-term manager for Manchester United. He won't guide us to long-term success. He was saying a few weeks ago that that's his priority though to get the club to long-term success, but he won't do it because he was discussing his contract situation the other week and he said that, you know, a new contract isn't his priority at the moment. Uh, I think Solskjaer's more than halfway through now his three-year deal at the club. The club did make a mistake giving him the job permanently, but we're giving the job permanently 
reflects on what he did in that three month period when he was the interim manager. But the club have made a lot of mistakes in the last seven years and that's one of the main explanations why we have been so inconsistent. You know, Oli Solskjaer has been Manchester United manager now for two years. It's nearly now his two-year anniversary. And this is his second full season at Man United. And I always said, didn't I, this was going to be a big season for him. And I said, if we could win a trophy this season and if we could finish in the top four, that would represent a very good season for Man United. Then that would give us something to build on. Oli's under contract with us until 2022. But I can assure he won't see out his contract at the club. There's obviously been talks of uh, Mauricio Pochettino replacing Oli. You know, he's been the favourite to take over. You know, a few times Masmiliano league has been on our agenda. Um, a few weeks ago, Julian Nagelsmann was on our agenda. And reports from Germany recently said that we could make a move for Thomas Tuchel if we sack Oli Gunnar Solskjaer in the next few weeks but if we did sack Solskjaer to be honest with you it wouldn't really solve a lot because he's not only the problem at the football club is it you know and like I've said to you you know Solskjaer's inheriting a squad that is worth 800 odd million pounds you know because he's inheriting a lot of plays here from the Jose Mourinho era there's only a few plays here now from the Louis van Gaal era, one play here from the Moyes era, and there's only two plays here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. You know what I mean? Uh, Ollis spent over £200 million since he became Man United manager, and he's brought around 10 senior players in, and he's endured around four transfer windows at the club. <laughs> you know, Solskjaer recently said that Man United can win the Premier League, that certainly won't happen this season. I don't think we're going to win it for at least the next couple of years. We haven't had a title-winning team for a good six years. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won it uh, since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Now, these good players at Manchester United, like I've said before, you know, I think, you know, Marcus Rashford's obviously very, very good. One of our best players, not the best, but one of them. You know, he's enjoyed very good games this season. He has been a couple of games, though, where he has looked a bit off the pace. He weren't so good against City recently, didn't have that end product, and he weren't so good against West Brom. But obviously, he'd had a shoulder problem at that point. I just prefer Marcus Rashford out wide than playing centrally. Because he's more effective out wide than he is central. Sometimes he can play all right central, I suppose, but... Rashford has been part of the club for several years. Um, I've got obviously got to say that Mason Greenwood is a very, very good player. <laughs> you know, this is his second season in our senior squad. Uh, Solskjaer has been defending him a lot recently. Uh, Greenwood weren't great against City, but he was good against RB Leipzig and he was good the other week against West Ham. Got his name on the score sheet, but... And had a lot of a perception on him this season because obviously he's had personal issues, had injuries and obviously was out with illness at one point. At the start of this season, we give Mason Greenwood that number 11 shirt. Greenwood's under contract with Man United until 2023. You know, he can play on the right and he can play him centrally, but I actually prefer him out on the right. But sometimes he can put a good performance out when he's playing alongside Rashford in that central position. Uh, I've also got to say that Edison Cavani's good. You know, Cavani has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career. Obviously has been out with a muscle problem recently. I'm hopeful that he's going to be back for the game against Sheffield United this Thursday. You know, Cavani missed the Manchester Derby. I was hopeful he was going to be back for that one. You know, Cavani obviously came off the bench the other week and scored twice against Southampton and got an assist. Changed the complexion of that game. You know, he did well in the Istanbul Basakshi game at Old Trafford. I thought he did well when he came on against West Brom. He scored his first goal for the club in our 3-1 win against Everton. And he almost scored with his first touch on his Premier League debut against Chelsea, you know, in that 0-0 draw. 
When we got Edison Cavani, I did say, didn't I, he will be the next Slatan Ibrahimovic. Um, I think Martial is very, very good when he wants to be. You know, this season though he's been very poor. You know, he just hasn't been clinical enough in front of goal. Martial just recently come back from a groin problem. Obviously, that injury wasn't too severe. This season, Martial's failed to replicate what he did last season because last season he was very, very good. He scored twenty three goals in forty eight games, and he was good in his debut season under Louis Van Gaal. We've got Anthony Martial at the age of 19. And Martial's enjoyed a good five years or so now at the football club. Uh, we got him in a deal, was it worth like 57 or 58 million? We paid like 36 million pounds up front. Don't forget he had a free match suspension earlier on this season because he got sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, he's also very good. Like I've said, he's the best player we've got and he's the best signing that we've made since Alex Ferguson retired. You know, Fernandes has been at Man United now a year, almost a year, sorry. You know, he won Player of the Month for November. He's won that quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. You know, Bruno Fernandes scored a lot of goals. Let's be honest, a lot of his goals have come from the spot. Um, he's also provided assists. I think he's created more chances than any other player in the Premier League this season. That's good to his standards. Uh, was it after the 3-1 win against West Ham? It said that we'd off we was preparing to offer him a new contract worth 200 grand a week, doubling his current wages. We paid £47 million pounds for him from Shakhtar Donetsk back in January. Um, I think Donny van der Beek's also very, very good. You know, we paid £40 million for him from Ajax. I like him in a deeper role because that's where he's more effective and that's where we have been playing him recently. I think Donny van der Beek should be involved in the game on Thursday against Sheffield United because he didn't play any part against City, Donny van der Beek, but he did uh, play against RB Leipzig. didn't start that came on. He obviously started against West Ham. That was his second start in the Premier League. But Van der Beek can play in like three different roles, can't he? Um, I think Fred's a good player. You know, he's enjoyed good games this season for Man United. You know, where he's broke up the play well and he's showed good attacking intent. And he's dictated the play well at times, but he's not world class. We paid £47 million for him from Shakhtar Donetsk. And I also think Paul Pogba, he's good when he wants to be. And he's proven that recently, but, you know, he's been very inconsistent in a lot of his games at Man United. You know, he was very good though at Juventus. Um, at Tom Way, he's a good player when he wants to be, but again, not world class. Um, I think Luke Shaw's a good player. My only element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he's injury prone. Just recently come back from a hamstring problem not so long ago. Uh, Alex Tellez, I think he's a good player. And I said he's going to be a good signing for Man United. I think he's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career. He had a bad game against RB Leipzig. That was his first bad game since he came to Man United. We got him in a deal worth £15.4 million. Um... Harry Maguire is a good centre half when he wants to be. You know, he has enjoyed some good games this season where he has been very effective in the air and he showed that ability to play out from the back and that. But he's also enjoyed some bad games. My my reservation about Harry Maguire is too slow. And he does get exposed quite a few times. He certainly wasn't worth the £80 million pounds that we got him for. So as it stands at the moment, he is the most expensive centre half in the world. You know, Bay's good, that's when he's on the pitch. You know, he's always injured, isn't he, Eric Bay? But he doesn't get in the team lot now anyway, so could he possibly go uh, next year? You know, Lindelof can do well when he wants, but I've got reservations about him. Uh, Man Wan-Bissaka, I think he's a very good right-back. 
Uh, there's games this season where he's got into decent positions and he's put good crosses into the box and he had to show some good attacking intent. But we've still got his reservations about Basaka. Uh, Juan Mata, you know, he's been good in the in a lot of the games he's played in this season as well. So yeah, these good players at Manchester United. Uh, we have done very well away from home. You know, we have won our last nine away games in a row in the league. You know, we haven't lost away from home in the league since January. So we've gone almost a year now about losing away from home in the league. Uh, but away at home, we've been absolutely abysmal. You know, we've only won one game at Old Trafford in the Premier League this season. That's when we beat West Brom 1-0. So we have been enjoying our worst start at Old Trafford for around 50 years. So, yeah. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.